Okay, now we look at this passage, Romans 8.28. I'm going to demonstrate this, uh, to put this into a sermon. So this is what I expect you to do at this point. At this point, I don't want you to do any other assignments. Just do assignments of any Bible passage in the Bible. And uh, it's best that you can, now maybe it's hard for you to put down um, the color in your assignment, but you can put in parentheses, in brackets, that this is red, this is blue, uh, green, this is red. So this passage says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Now in some versions it doesn't say God works, but actually it's in the original Greek. And uh, it's not just the, uh, the all things work for good, it's in all things God works for the good of those who love Him. Okay, the NIV preserves this, God works. So in all things, that means in difficult times and in good times, in situation that we are successful and not successful, when there are, when there are difficulties or when everything is smooth, in all the situations, in good times and bad times, God will work for the good of those who love Him, not for everyone, only for those who love Him. Because when people don't love Him, they don't get the blessings of God. That means they don't have a connection with God. Even Christians who just care about themselves, they don't have the joy of the Lord. They worry about a lot of things. So they don't have the joy of the Lord. They don't have the strength of the Lord. But when we love God, then we receive the blessings. Now, God always wants to bless us. But when we don't love God, then we close our hearts. Then God cannot bless us. But when we open our heart, then God can bless us and pour His blessings into our life. So God always wants to bless us. It's just whether we open our heart and trust in Him and obey Him and love Him. And then when we love Him, that He will work in all things for the good of us. That we have been called according, for, uh, according to His purpose. So God called us for His purpose, for His good purpose. His purpose is good for us and good for the kingdom that God wants to use us for his kingdom and use us for our good that we are called to follow him to follow his purpose and his purpose is good so here I explain why is red because it's in all things God works for the good of those who love him we love God so this is green so in this passage there is no blue so here is just in all things God works for the good. So that is God's work, it's grace. And then for those who love Him, this is green. And then we are called according to His purpose. Now, the blue is not here, but the opposite is for those who don't love Him, that not all things work for their good. So that's the opposite for those who don't love Him that even good times, uh, they might become proud, and in bad times, they, may, they might lose faith. So it might not work for their good. But for Christians who love God, then everything will work for our good. Okay, and then, um, in all things here, it means in good times and in bad times. And... Here I'm asking a question. What quality must God have in order to be able to work for the good of those who love Him in all situations? So what quality? So we can think for a moment. What quality? Uh, why can He work in all things for, for the good of those, for those who love Him? Well, um, first He is Almighty, right? He has the power. That in all situations he can do things. Now for us we have no power. When we when we have no money, when we have no job, when we have uh, no health, human beings have no ability to do things. Only God can do things. And God can do things even when we don't have money, don't have good health, God can change things. And God can bless us in the midst of the difficult times. So he has his almighty. 
and also he is caring. He is he cares about us, and he knows who who loves him, and he will reward those who love him. So these are some qualities of God. So we think about the passage. What quality must God have in order that He can uh, work for good for the good of those of those who love Him? So He is Almighty and He cares about us. He wants to bless us and He knows who love Him and He remembers that we love Him and He will for sure. He will make sure that we are blessed in the process. Now, the blessing might not be uh, immediately changing the situation. For instance, when we don't have money, he might not change the situation right away. He ha- first, he just want to help us to trust in him. He want us. He wants to help us to trust. He wants to help us to trust in him instead of um, providing for our money immediately. So. God doesn't necessarily immediately give us what we want, but He has a plan. Eventually, He can answer our prayer, provide for our need. I mean, actually, in the beginning, He also answered our prayer, but He doesn't do it according to our need uh, of money first. That He will first help us to have faith in Him, and then He will help us, uh, uh, and then uh, later He will provide for us. So God sees that most important thing for him to give us money is no problem he wants to see that people love him and obey him and trust in him so when he sees that quality then he will provide for that person so it's very important for us to understand that it's most important for God to see that we have these qualities okay now interpretation of this passage God can work so when we uh, when you do the assignment, please explain your passage. Now, I haven't seen you do that. Please explain the passage. So God can work in all things for the good of those who love Him. All things include favorable things and unfavorable things that happen to us. That means He can do wonderful things in the midst of all these things for our favor. So even when we lose money, even when we have health problem, even when we have an accident, even when someone has a sickness in the family, in all these things that God can work for our good. Even when we suffer, He can give us peace and strength and help us to grow spiritually. And when we grow spiritually, God can bless our whole life. So God wants to see our reliance on Him, trusting Him, loving Him. Loving him, when we have this spiritual quality, then God is happy with us, and He will bless us, and He will be happy with us. So I hope that we remember that. That is more important for us to trust in God and love God and obey Him. So here the passage, uh, the message. Okay, theme: appreciate God's work in all situation, and not to be afraid of any difficult situation. So this is the theme that we appreciate God's work in all situations when we have good times or bad times that we appreciate God's work in all this situation and not to be afraid of any difficult situation even when we lose money, when we lose our health that we're not afraid. We are in God's loving hand when we trust in Him and obey Him. So A are negative examples or positive examples of Christians. So many Christians worry and lose their strength when they face difficult times. They think that facing difficult times means means that God is not helping us. So, so many Christians they don't really apply this passage. And then when they face difficult times, they say, "God is not helping me. God is God has forgotten me. God doesn't love me." So they worry about God, and the more they worry. The more they doubt God, the less they will get blessings from God. When we trust in God in difficult situation, even when we face martyrdom, about to be to suffer for Christ and even to die for Christ, we say, "God is with me. God remembers me. God is giving me strength." Then, when we have this faith, God is very happy and He will help us. Even when we die for Christ, God will be with us all the moment when we went through the suffering. 
So I, I trust in God for that, and I'm not afraid to die for Christ. I prepare my heart so that I'm not afraid to die for Christ. So, but many people lose their faith and they worry. Okay, so the A, and the B would be good nature and grace. That God is almighty and full of love. God must be in control of everything if He can work for the good of those who love Him in all situations. So God is in control of everything. And He knows what is going to happen to us. He knows when we are about to be, to, to, uh, to be persecuted. He knows when we need money. He knows all this. And He can do wonderful things even when we face difficult times. So this is His nature. He's almighty and full of love. Everything in His hand. He knows what to do. He knows what's going to happen to us. And He has the ability to do wonderful things. So this is God's nature. So I hope that in all passages, in all messages that you write, that you will always start with God's nature. Uh, of course, you have the negative or positive example. And then God's nature. And then example. For example, when we are persecuted for our faith, so that is difficult time. God can work in the hearts of those who love Him to strengthen their faith, to train them to become stronger Christians, and to bless their life more after that. So even when we are persecuted for our faith, that God can work in our heart that our faith will be strengthened, that we know that God is with us all the time so we don't worry, and to train us become stronger. So we become stronger Christians when we go through difficult times, persecution. And to bless the life more after that. So after that, God knows that we are not afraid of persecution and God, we have faith in Him that God will bless us. Another example, when we have health or financial problems, God can work in our hearts to trust in Him only. When we trust in God only, God is pleased with us and He'll bless us more. So even when we have health, or financial problems. God can work in our hearts to help us to trust in Him more. So when we have difficult times, then we learn to trust in Him more. You know, I, I went through difficult times myself. After I experienced the Holy Spirit, I have years that I did not have salaries. And uh, before that, before I experienced the Holy Spirit, I had salary, constant salary from the church all the time. But after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I don't have salaries uh, for a few years. But I continue to trust in God. God will have a way. And in the process, I learn to trust in Him more. And I see God's provision come from time to time. And uh, also, God teaches me different teachings in this process. That in these difficult times, I learn to trust in God more and my faith grow more. And I have I received more and more teachings from God. So I thank God for that, for those years. For those years, I rely on God more. I trust in Him more. And I declare that He is loving me. He is helping me. That eventually, all this problem will be overcome. So I trust in Him. And then in this process, God blesses me more. God strengthens me more. Okay, an example, when a Christian sins and is truly repentant. Now, it's, it's not good for Christians to sin, but, but still God can do good things. Now, the sin might, could bring destruction to this Christian. But when he repents, truly repents, he can grow more after that. Of course, we don't want to sin intentionally. Uh, but if a person accidentally falls into sin and he repents, then God can still do wonderful things in his life. Even when a Christian sins intentionally and then he repents, it can still work for his good in the future. But the sin itself could bring some destruction. For instance, he could suffer, he could be persecuted by people, he could be rejected by some people when he sins. But God will strengthen him, raise him up to a high level when he truly repents. So even when a Christian sins and is truly repentant, God works in his heart so that he will hate sin 
and this will help him to turn away from sins in the future. So he will have more motivation to turn from sin in the future. When we rely on God more, God can make our lives to go to a higher level and that will bring more blessings to us. So if the Christian learn to truly hate sin and trust in God only, then his life will go to a higher level after his sins and he repents. So God can work in all situations, even when we enter problems because of our sin, then the person is truly repentant and then he can have more, more blessings. But if he doesn't repent, then he, you know, he will go down more and more. Two, that, uh, so this is the more grace. Okay, so this, uh, that first is God's nature. God's nature and grace. And then this second point is His grace. This verse conveys the message that God knows the situation of all Christians. He's all knowing and all caring. He cares about us and our situation, so we should never say, God has forget, forgotten me. So, if He can do good things for those who love Him, that means He knows, he knows our situation and He knows our heart. So He's all-knowing and all-caring. So from this verse, if we meditate on it more, so when we prepare messages, we should meditate on the, pas the, the passage more to think about what qualities does God have to have. So He knows who loves Him. That means He knows. And then He can work good things for those who, lo uh, for, for those who love Him. In good times or bad times, that means He knows what we're going through. And He knows what to do to help us. In those times, He's all-knowing and all-caring. He cares about us and our situation, so we should never say, God has forgotten me. And then God knows who loves Him. And He will give extra blessings to those people in all situations, so He knows who loves Him. And then why many Christians don't believe that God works for their good? So why do many people, why don't many Christians believe in this verse because many Christians just concentrate in the situation and the needs. They don't fully believe in God's goodness because they just think about the needs and the problem. And many Christians don't love God much so they don't have no experience God working for the good. So many Christians they, they don't love God and they don't trust in God so whenever their problem they always complain, they're always unhappy so they say everything works for they're bad. It doesn't for the. It's not for the good. It's for the bad because they don't trust in God. Now there are many Christians like that, and that's why they don't live out this, this um, Bible verse. Now why do we talk about this? The reason, so that people could wake up. So when we preach to the people, we say, now this Bible verse promises that God knows our situation. He knows who loves Him, and He will. Uh, he has ability and He has the love to bless us in those situations and He wants to bless us and He wants to uh, help us in those situations and He can raise us up in those situations. But there are Christians in difficult times, they always complain, they always worry and they don't seek God, they just seek people. And then they suffer more and then they think God is not helping them. The problem is that they don't love God. So that is like a warning to people. And then D, reminder and warning from God. The promise in this verse is for those who love Him, to love God. So if a Christian does not love God, there is no guarantee that his life will experience blessings all the time. There is no guarantee if he doesn't love God, that, that uh, if he continues sin, for sure Satan will come to steal, kill, and destroy, and he will lose more and more. First. Corinthians 16.22 If anyone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. So if the person doesn't love God, doesn't love Jesus, the person is accursed. So that is terrible. But if a person loves God, it's, there will be blessing. So this is a warning, a reminder that I'm not saying we don't use the law. We use God's nature and grace first and then we use the law. So we remind people, yes, God promises to bless us when we love Him. 
But when people don't love Him, then there will be destruction. But first we want to talk about God's nature, how wonderful He is. He is almighty, He knows everything, He knows who loves Him, He knows our situation, He knows what we are facing, and He wants to help us. And then when He sees someone who loves Him, He is very happy and He will for sure bless Him. Okay, E, how? Now, I'm not saying every one of you have to use my way of outline. But at least you must have two parts. First part is this God's nature and His grace. <clears throat> so that we're motivating people with God's nature and grace. And then secondly, we must have how. How can we live out that nature? Okay. Now, for the time being, I want you to write sermons using these five points because I noticed that some of you don't use outlines and the message just go different directions doesn't have a clear direction so I want you to have a clear direction and these five points will help you to have a clear direction okay so how can we experience God working for our good in all situations this is the how so remember how God has drawn us to follow him and how he has blessed our lives this will build up a faith in God's goodness. So we remember how God drawn us to believe in Jesus, how He has blessed our whole life, how He has changed our life, how He has drawn us to obey Him and love Him and give us joy and peace and strength and how He has blessed us many times in the past. So this will build up our faith. So we remember every time when God does something good in our lives then we are happy. Second, Count all the blessings of God and be appreciative. This will help us to love God more. So count all His blessings, how He protects us, how He provides for us. Now I, I remember, always remember how He protects me from a few accidents that I could got, get into and I could be, I could be killed. I could, I, one time my fingers almost lose these three fingers when I pull a garage door and, and I you know, I pull on the door and it, uh, it closes on my fingers and I had pain for a few months. If the strength was a little stronger, I could have lost my fingers. And I thank God I have these fingers. Thank God. Thank God for that. So I remember all these things, how He gives me joy and love, how He has used me to pray for people, to teach people, how He has given me different teachings. I'm very, very happy. So I count all the blessings and I'm very appreciative. And learn to love God more. Spend more time with God and do the things God wants us to do. Dedicate our whole lives to God. The more we love Him, the more we will experience God's blessings in all situations. So we want to learn to love God more. Spend more time with God and do the things God wants us to do. And dedicate our whole lives to God. And then the more we do it, the more we experience His goodness. And the more we'll see that all things work for our good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just to preach the message without looking at the outline, just to help you see how, um, how it flows. Okay, so this Bible passage, as we, uh, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. This is a very precious uh, passage because it promises that when we love God, all things will work for our good, even bad times, even when we have sickness, when we lose money, when we lose our job, even when there are people who persecute us, uh, even when there are problems in the church. Now, of course, we want to try to overcome the problems in the church but the problems in the church will help us trust to trust in God more so in those difficult situations if we are people who trust in God and love God then we'll say Lord I want to trust in you alone I want to rely on you alone and then this Bible passage promises that he will bless us now what qualities does God have in order to be able to bless us that he promised that he would do it now we cannot promise to anyone. We cannot promise to anyone and say, when you, have, uh, when you are in difficult time, I will come to help you. We cannot promise that. Because sometimes we are not near the person. Sometimes we don't know the situation. Sometimes we are busy. So we have no guarantee that we can help a person at a certain time. 
but God knows our situation and He cares about us and He has the ability to change all things. In all situations, He can do things for our good. Now, how, how does He do it? First, He creates faith in us. He, when we trust in God, we have stronger faith in God and rely on God and we'll pray to God more. Lord, Lord, you, I'm now, the way to pray is to declare God is good. God, you are good. You will help me. That is the best way to pray. Instead of saying, Lord, I'm in trouble. Please come and help me. Because God wants to help us. It's just our faith, our relationship with God. So we can say, God, I know that you want to help me. Lord, give us, give me faith. Instead of trying to change God, we ask God to change us. God, give me faith so I trust in you in this situation. I rely on you in this situation so that you can do great things in my life. So, in that situation when we trust in God, God can help us, He can take away the problems, or He can build up our faith to a higher level. And He can build us, us up so that we have a good testimony, and that will strengthen all the people around us. And all the people around us are strengthened. And the church is built up in the process. So He can do many kinds of things in our lives when we face difficult times. We have seen some Christians, they grow a lot in the difficult times. When they have sickness, they rely on God more. They grow more. And for me, I had you know, a difficult time after I experienced the Holy Spirit. I was persecuted by the traditional church. But I rely on God more and God provides for me step by step, not all, not instantly. But in the process, I learn to rely on God more and God gives me more teaching. So the suffering causes me to rely on God more and my spiritual life grow more and my spiritual knowledge grow more, how to handle problems grow more and my ministry grow stronger. My spiritual life grows stronger. I know how to help people. I know how to help myself and help other people. So that is how God does wonderful things in our life because He is all-knowing. He is almighty. He is caring. And he, is, he has the ability to intervene in our problems. He has the ability to bring people to help us. He has the ability to bring provision. He has the ability to do everything. And then when we trust in God in the process, at the end, we'll be blessed more and more. Okay, now, if God is so good, how come so many Christians say, I don't experience that? Now, here I'm talking about the reason. Because many Christians just don't believe that. They just look at the problems. They look at the needs. They look, they worry. And they, the, when they worry, they doubt God and they don't, have joy and they don't have faith and they suffer more and they they complain and the relationship with, with God declines instead of going up. So instead of worrying, we should trust in God more. But many Christians, they, they worry and they doubt God and they lose strength and they have more problems in their life. And uh, so that's why many Christians, they say, Nothing good happens to me. They, they say, I have problem with people, I have problem with my job, I have problem with money, I have problem with my family, I have problem with my ministry, because they don't see that God is the source of all blessings. They don't see that trusting in God is the best thing. So this is warning. I'm warning that t saying the opposite and the reason why people are suffering. But when we trust in God, even no matter how great the difficulties are, then our life will change. So how can we change? First, we study the Bible and believe in the promise in the Bible. Secondly, we build up our faith in God by counting all the blessings of God, how He has blessed me all these years, what He has done in my life. So we see God is blessing me all the time. He has done so many good things in my life. So I want to trust in Him more. So I want to love Him more. So we can think of a number of ways how we can, what we can do so that we can experience His goodness more in good times and in bad times. 
by trusting in His love, believing His love all the time, knowing that God for sure He will do good things and remember how He has done good things in my life. So I remember all this and I trust in Him and I rely on Him and then I don't doubt God anymore. I don't question God anymore. And we trust in God more and our spiritual life will grow more and then we can experience His blessings more. Okay? So what I'd like you to do is first talk about His goodness and His grace in any passage, what He has done for us, how His nature, His nature, His good nature, and what He has done for us to motivate us so that we don't worry. So from this passage, God can work in all things for our good. So we don't worry because God would do things for our good even when we face difficulties. So we don't have to worry. So that motivates us not to worry. His goodness, His grace. So it's using His goodness and His grace to motivate people. Instead of saying, don't worry, don't worry. But use God's great, uh, nature and grace. And we want to spend time to explain God's nature and grace more so that people can appreciate God's nature and grace. So people will say, wow, God is so good. He is so powerful. Everything it is, in, is in His hand. He has the ability to bless us. He has the ability to help us. And He wants to help us. And in difficult times, even in difficult, ta difficult times, He can raise up people, uh, their spiritual life. So that is how good God is. So I hope we we'll all see God's good nature and His grace from the Bible passages. And then we appreciate God more. And then we'll say, God, I will trust in you more. I'll love you more. Then we'll, our life will be raised to a high level. So I hope we'll all motivate people with God's nature and grace and a reminder from the law not to disobey God because there, is, there are bad consequences. But the main motivation is from God's nature and grace. So don't just preach a sermon and say, love God and trust in God. You know, don't just tell people what to do. Tell people who God is and what He does for us. That is you know, our duty, our job is to tell people, to, to talk about God, not just talk about what we do. In many messages I receive, I just see people talking about what we do. I want you to talk about who God is, how wonderful He is, and what He does for us. So that people will be, will be happy with God, they will be impressed with God, they will like God, and they want to grow in God. Okay? So God help us to have this wisdom to explore God's nature and His grace and to expound that, to encourage people. And, and not just to talk in points, but to tell people how wonderful God is. He is very wonderful. He will for sure bless us. He, will, he wants to bless us and our whole life will be blessed. So there are good reasons to obey Him and trust in Him and love Him. So to motivate people like that, that's the main motivation from God's nature and grace. And the, and the secondary would be a reminder from the law and warning from the law. But that should not be the main motivation. Okay? God bless you and we'll have close with the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you because you're a wonderful God. In all things you can do great things for our lives that you can do wonderful things in our lives so we can trust in you. We can rely on you. We can... We can live in your love. Thank you, Father. You're so wonderful. Thank you, Father. You're so wonderful. You're so good. Lord, help us to believe that you can do great things even in our difficult times. You can bless us. You can help us. Even when the difficulties go, don't go away, we still trust in you and rely on you. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. Thank you, Lord. You're so good, so kind. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We love you. Rely, we rely on you. And we know that you are happy with that. And you bless us and strengthen us and give us strength and blessings. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. God bless you. And I hope to see your assignments. Because that's how you grow. I hope you desire growth in ministry. Growth in knowing God and talking about God so that people will be impressed with God, so that your members will know God more and love God more and follow God more. Okay? So God bless you and be with you. Okay? God bless you. Bye-bye. So that, this is it for today because we started late because people did not report the presence. So please 
remember to report your presence as early as possible so I know you're here before I start. Okay, God bless you. Bye-bye.